Well, here we are with Tim Smith's camera boat, his 15-foot answer. Uh, he and his dad worked uh, quite a bit on it, making forms. Uh, so today we were ready for the pour. So we basically quickly took those forms off and we put a uh, mold release on them. So after the sea cast set, we could remove all of those forms. They would come apart easily. So it was a sea cast job we did. Uh, we did it on my boat three years ago, and I mean, it's solid as a rock. There is no movement, whatever. But the key to that is sea cast fills the void, takes the place of the marine plywood that would be in between the inner and outer skin of the boat. But you have to finish it off with a good fiberglass job. You have to, you know, Pete Johnson is going to, after the, after the mold is, you know, these uh, molds are pulled out of here and so forth, he's going to be laying good, strong biaxial. Uh, woven glass, uh, mat, coarse biaxial fiber, completely over. So from the total inside, up, over the top, all the way down on the transom, and closing off the top. But once you have the glass over it, the fiberglass, uh, it is definitely like iron. As I said, my boat was, it's iron. Three years later, a lot of use and no movement whatsoever. So the process today involved mixing the sea cast, you get, uh, in our case, we bought uh, a large uh, two five-gallon kits. So the, it comes in a five-gallon can with the resin to which you add the catalyst, and you mix that for three minutes. Uh, then you add the shredded fiberglass material to it, and we used about 80%, not the full amount that they send, about 80%, maybe a tad less because it was getting a little bit thick and it wouldn't pour right. So it was somewhere in that neighborhood. That gets mixed in thoroughly for another three or four minutes of mixing time. And then what we had was we built spacers out of sea cast, chunks of sea cast that were sent from the company. We had to cut them down to one inch because this was a narrow transom. And we placed them inside and clamped it shut. So that prevented the clamps from closing off the transom and the clamps prevent the transom, the two skins from separating. All right. So we kind of had to engineer this as we went because the, the, we dug the transom out all the way off to the side. So we had sticks to push the sea cast to fill all the voids on the side. And as the pressure built up, it got higher. We worked it and pushed it to fill all the voids. As we poured, it ended up going in here. We had an opening where it filled this whole stringer, which on this boat, it didn't exist. It was all cut down. There was nothing here. There was no additional support for this transom. So now we have a great amount of support. This, uh, this is all filled, the stringer, all the way up, and it's an integral part of the transom itself. The sea cast flowed down, flowed in, filled this up. We then closed it off as it reached this height with heavy duty duct tape. We continued to fill the rest until it came up to the top, pounding it with a hammer to get any air bubbles out. And so now we're all set. This is now just about set up. It's definitely hardening. Tomorrow we can remove all of the stuff, take all of the forms away, and then decide what we have to do with glass to finish it up and, and make it look good and lock it up tight.